whole room in London full of King Max hackers. <laughs> Can you not hear me? Can you hear me on ILC? Tell me if they can't hear me on ILC. Um, this talk is about. I'm not going to do this. I'll stand up here. This talk is about hash Emacs. And Emacs Wiki and other crazy stuff. Hands up, who has used Emacs Wiki? Yes! Those of you who haven't, get out. Uh, so Emacs Wiki is kind of a, a funny one. Does anybody know who runs Emacs Wiki? Is Ken Sonata here? Is he here? Did he make it? He's... So Ken Sonata's Swiss. Uh, so I hoped he could make it. Emacs Wiki started uh, more, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, Ken Sonata, I think, wrote the first one. He wrote it in Perl. And it's kind of mad. Uh, and it's grown and grown and grown and grown and got madder and madder. Pearl was kind of mad to start with, and it hasn't got any less mad. Uh, so, so, I'm here to talk about what we're going to do about making it even more mad by choosing an even more inappropriate language to write the wiki in. I wonder if anyone can guess. <laughs> what we're going to choose. <laughs> Don't make me, because I will. John said Tico. So, the thing is about a piece of pearl, is you, you sit looking at the piece of pearl thinking, why isn't this Emacs Lisp? Oh my goodness, it's the Emacs Wiki. It just definitely should be. Everything should be Emacs. Um, so I am going to talk about how, how we're intended to do this, the fact that we've already got this working. I'm going to show you real live running code. I'm going to show you some Lisp. I'm going to show you actual uh, web pages produced by that Lisp. I'm going to show you the server that's serving it. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about how this is the, uh, an example of the Emacs problem um, and why we think that we're combating the Emacs problem. Why is it the Emacs problem? So let me start off by talking about that. One of the things that happens is when you talk about um, Emacs Wiki and, and saying, oh, it should be in Emacs, right? So everybody then goes, yeah, it should be org mode. Because org mode is cool. That's going to be, yeah, it's great. It should be org mode, and it should be driven by a steam train that's controlled by Emacs that runs on eggs. And you go, um, why? Well, and two hours later, they're still talking about how there's this tenuous link in all these strange technical things that gets them back to trains and eggs and org mode. The org mode one I can understand, right? I can understand why people want org mode. But there is this tendency that we have as a community to imagine the impossible, to imagine a, an impossible future state, and then say, we should go there. Um, why is org mode such a crazy idea for Emacs Wiki? Org mode is such a crazy idea for Emacs Wiki because, let me show you some Emacs Wiki. Uh, so I have the Emacs Wiki right here, right here on my computer. So Emacs Wiki is just a Git repo these days. So here we go. Does this look? Anything like org mode to you? Right, anyone? Shall I, we'll try put it into org mode, shall we? Let's just try making it org mode. Did that help? <laughs> no. This is why it's no good, right? If we want org mode here, oh look, there's some code here. We're going to have to... I can't remember even what the Babel stuff is for, for doing this, but you see what I mean? We're going to have to edit that. Who's going to edit that? Now, who's aware of uh, the uh, abortive Wikimax project last year? Anybody notice that? Let me tell you the story quickly. Bozidir Batsov, who is, who is um, 
a, an Emacs guy, right? He writes a lot of Emacs code. He does a lot of other stuff as well. But he's a big evangelist for Emacs. He's a cool guy. Right? And he got uh, hacked off the, the Emacs wiki was a mess. So along comes Positive and goes, Emacs wiki stinks. It's rubbish. Um, and he wrote a flame post and said, let's rewrite it with better tools. Let's rewrite it with MediaWiki and it'll be fantastic. And we'll have maintainers, lots of them. Uh, and those of us who'd been working on Emacs Wiki for a while went, uh-huh, where are they coming from? And Bozadir went, it's fine. It's going to be MediaWiki and it's going to be fine. And we went, uh-huh. And a year later, he said, oh, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because editing things is hard. Making content is hard. Right? That's always been the problem with wikis. You've got lots and lots and lots and lots of pages. And people come along very excitedly and enthusiastically and say, oh, I'm going to write lots of pages. And three weeks later, they've written 252 pages, which they never, ever alter again. Um, on the other hand, you get people who spend their whole lives pouring little bits of effort into wikis look at go look at what's happened with wikipedia over the last 20 years it's a massive project that has come from somewhere and is going somewhere it's not transformed by one guy in a year so this is why org mode is a bad idea the sigh so back when i was thinking about this something happened a few years ago, I can't remember, was this four or five years ago? 2011, I'm told. But not that long ago, actually. John McCarthy passed away. And John McCarthy, of course, as you all know, is the father of Lisp, right? So he's part of the reason that we're here. As uh, John Wiggly was saying, we did a lot of fuss about my surname. Have I just pronounced your surname correctly? Awesome. Awesome. I'm cool. I can pronounce weakly. Um, so he passed away, and he was the, a lot of the reason that we're here, right? So I decided that on the day that he died, I would spend the day writing Lisp. It would be the John Wigley Memorial Lisp Writing Day. <laughs> he might not be by the end of this talk, though. Uh, the John McCarthy uh, Memorial Day. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> the worry is that actually John has been a zombie for the last 15 years, so don't get too near him because he might eat your brains. Yeah, certainly will. Um, and maybe sooner than you think. Uh, just so this, when they put this on the web as a video, just so that I can say, no, no, that's absolutely right. Look, he died. It was sad. <laughs> Um, sorry, John, the John McCarthy Memorial Creole Parser was created on the day that he died. So let me show you some code. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you Creole. This is um, this is our Wiki Creole, which is. Uh, does anybody know what Creole is, other than uh, kind of uh, a language spoken by people? So a creole is defined by linguists as the, the thing after a pidgin. It's where two languages have met and assimilated to the point where they have a formal syntax. So a pidgin is where people just assimilate words from one language into another and it's kind of a mishmash. There's no formality about it. You can't call it a language at the point that it's a pidgin. The point that it's a creole, though, you really can. Now, creole in terms of computers and wikis is a, an agreed... Uh, wiki by committee. That sounds mad, doesn't it? But actually, committees have played an important part in this. Yes. Question. Video streamers can uh, read it a bit. Like that? <laughs> yes, probably a good idea. Okay. So I was just asked to increase the font size, and I just have. Um, so what's a Creole? A Creole is, uh, a, what's a Wiki Creole? Wiki Creole is an agreed standard by a whole bunch of people who've been involved in wikis for years and years and years. So it's a standard about how to, how to present wiki. It's fairly basic, but it's a standard. It's, it, it works. By chance, it's very, very similar 
to the Emacs wiki. Ta da! So, on the day that John McCarthy died, not John Wigley, um, I wrote this Creole parser which turns uh, a standardized wiki format that looks a lot like Emacs wiki into HTML. Okay, there's some code. It's kind of. I'm going to tell you about a guy in a minute who's working on this with me, and it's kind of just a mash of hideous regexes. Uh, let me show you some really hideous. Look, there's some Rx. Anybody know about Rx? Rx is a great way of representing regexes as Lisp. Uh, so this one, whoop, too long. Let's make it shorter. This one says um, it's got to start, the regex has got to start with buffer start or beginning of line or beginning of string. And then there's a group, so like those things we normally grab in parentheses. And then it must not start with the uh, square bracket. And then it's got to be two or more of capitalized words. That's pretty easy to read, actually, in, uh, in Lisp. Here's one that's not really very easy to read because this is a string and it, I'm not even going to bother reading that. <laughs> that's just insane, isn't it? There's no way. So this is an unmaintainable load of um, <coughs> stuff. But there we go. Nonetheless, it kind of works. Um, let's switch back. So what else do you do? We've got a, we've got a way of generating HTML from wiki text. What else do you need? You need a web server, don't you, really? We got a web server in Emacs? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, in fact, in fact, there's, there's always been web servers in Emacs. Uh, even in the days before we could make sockets in Emacs, um, we had a web server. <laughs> Because uh, people used to run it from CGI. People were actually, with all of the concerns about how fast Emacs starts up, uh, people still used to run Emacs as a CGI from Apache. Let's just take a moment to congratulate ourselves on our complete lunacy. <laughs> moment taken. Um, so instead of doing something crazy like starting up Emacs as a CGI, uh, it's much better to write a whole HTTP server in Emacs and just have it sit there. Um, obviously. Actually, it's not as mad as you think, right? Hands up, who's used Node.js? A surprisingly small number of hands go up. Um, but Node.js is a single-threaded JavaScript web server. Well, okay, so it's a bit more than that. Um, but what more than that isn't very interesting, is it? Let's face it. So let's concentrate on the web server aspects of it. It's a single-threaded JavaScript engine doing a web server. Well, Emacs is single-threaded, certainly. Uh, okay, it's not JavaScript, but JavaScript, as we all know, used to be Scheme until someone broke it. Um, so that's kind of a precedent. Uh, the story of Elnode is kind of amusing. I was working at a dating startup, and uh, we actually did take Jamie Zawinski's um, uh, saying about uh, groupware as a, as a motto. I don't know if many of you know that story. Jamie Zawinski is a famous Emacs hacker, right? Um, he was uh, visited by a friend who was building a big groupware product, and um, I've just realized where this story is going and there are children present. Um, but anyway, he was visited by this friend who was doing a, a big group web product and he's, his friend was all excited. He said, oh, that's fantastic, it's coming groupware. And Jamie just went, oh, no, groupware, you're insane. That's what killed Netscape. Don't go near groupware. But if you do, think, you know, don't, the enterprise stuff is mad. Think. You know, there's a different use case, though. It's the guy in his dorm room, and he's trying to make friends. Um, that's not what Jamie said, but you get the idea. Um, so we took that as a motto. And while we were in business, uh, along came a thing called Chat Roulette. And Chat Roulette was an interesting website. 
uh, uh, that allowed you to meet people very, very quickly. Within seconds, you could meet someone new. And uh, so it's basically a massive pool of people uh, with video and chat and you could connect and then you could next them if you didn't like them which mostly you didn't so you would next them a lot you go next 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 like right and when you run out of people you would go away so the object was to give you enough people to keep you there just hitting the next button because it was actually kind of therapeutic just nexting these people I don't like you next 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 I don't want to see that next next Next. Oh, an interesting hat. Next. Next. Um, so that sounds amusing, right? But it's actually a really, really difficult problem. You've got to give people a live video stream and chat in less than a second, or they walk away and you lose their ad revenue. Um, so you can't do that. You can't do that with threads. You can't do that with normal concurrency tools, right? So you've got you've got to have ten thousand people online in order to achieve that. That's a huge number of people, and you just can't do it with threads. So how do you do it? You do it with async. So I was working in this startup, and we were building async tools, and we started off trying to do it with Flash, the same way that the chat roulette guys had done. We were desperate to kind of come out with a product to to match them. There's their thing kept falling over, so we had a window of about three months where they couldn't hold their system up for more than about an hour at a time before it would collapse uh, under the weight of Daily Telegraph journalists all visiting at the same time. Um, they do have a lot of journalists whose job it is just to get involved in smutty stories, um, so especially on the internet. Um, so, sorry, is there somebody from the Daily Telegraph here? I heard hissing. Anyway, so we were desperate, and uh, we tried Flash, and it didn't work. So instead of that, we wrote some Python, and that kind of worked. We managed to get Python working, basically completely async, single-thread Python server, and lots of asynchronous callbacks. Um, and I sat down after a hard day's hacking Python one day, and I was just tinkering about with Emacs, as you do, you know, for relaxation purposes, and... Uh, I suddenly came across this function of make network stream and I, I, you know, I was just idly looking at the documentation thinking I wonder what you could do with this and it said, let's find it, make network process, sorry. Let's just keep going down. The tension mount. It's probably, not, it's probably not in this function at all, and I've completely forgotten where it is. No, here we go. Server. So this creates a server. My network process creates a server, and I remember very distinctly thinking, "Oh my God, I could write chat roulette inside Emacs." And so I started to. <laughs> and what came out that what came out the back? It was very it was funny because I sat there on on the IRC channel and went, "Oh my God, we can make network processes." And somebody said, "Oh yeah, yeah, we've been able to do that for a while." And about twenty minutes later, I said, "Oh my God, we can make an HTTP server." Oh my God! It just went on like that for about three or four hours as I basically built the first. Um, so Lnode has been there for a while, and let's do list Lnode servers. Okay, so list Lnode servers lists the Lnode servers. We can see we've got two here, one on 8001 and one on uh, 8019. I'm just going to show you quickly. Um, Lnode. Okay, this is Lnode serving this page. Lnode comes with a wiki. This table here is being delivered by uh, or being rendered by org mode. That's an org mode table. This list here is being produced by um, dynamic list. Oh, there you go. It works. It's pretty fast, right? So 
I got to a point where I had L node and I had a wiki, that simple wiki that I just showed you works. You can go and edit it, you can change it. It's nowhere near anything that we could use for Emacs wiki. Nowhere near. How am I doing for time? Um, so, and I decided that I didn't want to support Emacs wiki. Like, I didn't want to have everything to do with that. What did, why not? Because I start things, but right? I don't run them. I'm, I'm just no good at that. So I can, I can get a startup off the ground quickly. I can, you know, I can start a new project, blah, 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 blah. I'm not a maintainer. And there's no way I could do what Ken Sonata does. There's no way I could run the Emacs wiki. And if I wrote, you know, all the code, that's what I'd have to do. And that would be insane. What's the real reason, though, for writing it in Emacs Lisp? It's because we've got a community of Emacs Lispers who could then hack on it. So what's the sensible thing to do? It's to wait. Wait for somebody to come along and write it for you. The thing is, if you hang around on hash Emacs enough whining about it, then eventually somebody gets bored and agrees to do it for you. So there's a guy who lives in New Zealand. And, well, I'm not going to tell you his name. His, his handle is Aid Algol. Why he's called Aid Algol, I don't know. Perhaps he runs some charity for Algol users. They probably need it by now. Um, so... Ed Algol came along and he, he said, look, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to hack on Emacs databases or I'm going to hack on Wiki. And I said, Wiki, 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 Wiki. And he went, okay. So he then went off and wrote a whole bunch of stuff based, okay, so based initially on what I had in the um, Emacs Wiki, um, or sorry, in the Illnode Wiki. Um, and he went off and, and wrote... Uh, a basic wiki. I'm going to show you some of his code. Ah, uh, so. His code, I'll, uh, I think you'll agree, is nowhere near as nice as mine. <laughs> uh, so, oh, this is also based on, sorry, I should give a shout out to a guy called uh, Tally713. Hmm. Um, Tally713, again, Emacs, hash Emacs handles only, please. What goes on Emacs stays on hash Emacs. Um, and, and this guy wrote a, a templating engine in Emacs Lisp. So let me find you an example, ESXML. So who's heard of um, SXML? Anyone? couple of hands go up. SXML is a scheme thing that uh, allows you to represent XML in, in lists, in scheme lists. Now, Tally has rewritten that in ELISP, obviously. Um, and it's pretty cool. And it kind of works, and we use it in the wiki here. So here you can see an example. There's an even crazier example somewhere else. Uh, where is it? Here we go. There's an entire, so it's a bit difficult to see this with the font size as it is. Let me just make it smaller so you can see it just a bit. Um, so you can see that this is just a whole representation of a form doing um, uh, a post. And it's got uh, a text area, which is where the wiki text is going to go. And it's got labels and da -da 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 inputs. Yeah, so he just represents that in a straight list, and you can interpolate into it. Look, this is a list with a backtick. So any of you list programmers will know that you can just interpolate normal values into that. So it's kind of clever. It's a bit mad to work with, um, but we are Emacs list programmers, so that is par for the course. Um, so here is the L wiki code net. Does it work? Does it work? Let's find out if it works. I'm going to show you, this is my page. Um, now, this GitHub version that I've got of the Emacs wiki code is quite old, um, but there's no reason for that except that I'm lazy and that it changes a lot. Um, so it's a lot of data to pull every day for absolutely no reason right now. So this is running off my local host. I will... Um, 
I will stop that though, and uh, at the break I'll um, I'll make this run real on a on a host that you can all talk to. Obviously, you can't talk to local host, but if I set this up on a on my IP address and publish my IP address somewhere, I'll write it on a board or something, and then everyone can just hit it. Um, but this is my page on the Emacs wiki, rendered by LWiki, eight L goals code, running under LNode, um, with the code being generated by Creole. Um, so you see that we've got one enormous advantage already over Emacs wiki, we've got syntax highlighting straight away. The syntax highlighting is being done by Emacs. <laughs> Do I have to say that anymore? Just presume that everything's being done by Emacs, okay? <laughs> um, so uh, the syntax highlighting is coming out of HTML mode. Um, it syntax is highlights anything that Emacs can highlight, clearly. Uh, but does this work? Have I faked this up? Is this just a fake? Could be, couldn't it? I might have just done one page. Um, so let's find a page that hasn't got a link in. Well, so. Uh, John, have you got a page? John W? Like that. There we go. I've never been to this page before. So, right, cool. You, I, I'm glad to see that you're working hard on the Emacs wiki. Um, so let's go to the sitemap. Okay. That's working, right? There's a lot that still isn't working, but basically we have a wiki running in Emacs Wiki. Not only that, but there's some neat features, right? So if we look at the header. This is the header of, uh, of the Emacs Wiki site as it's running under my laptop. And you can see that this is just Creole. This is just a Creole file. That's a link to the logo. So this is being shoved into every page by the wiki engine. Um, this sets up a list, which is then rendered. And, oh look, we're spitting out the time string with Emacs. Um, maybe we should uh, do something else, right? Maybe we should yow. Who knows yow? Okay, now if we do it, now we can yow. Uh, so I don't know if we can think of any other mad things to do in Creole, but or in with Lisp. But uh, one of the things is that when you're parsing this, uh, the Lisp to do this is a chain, a, a chain of parsers. So the parsers, crap, really awful, full of regexes, as I showed you but it does have logical stages. So what we do is we take the initial Creole and we turn that into a massive list of elements, just like a syntax tree would be. And that syntax tree is then available to further stages in the transformation pipeline. So at the point where we run that Lisp, we could have access to the whole page as a Lisp object, and therefore we could do all sorts of funky things. Now, those of you who really know Emacs Wiki quite well will notice that there isn't a, um, there should be a table of contents just here under the first paragraph um, of the page. If the page is more than three sections long, then the Oddmuse code introduces um, a, a thing here. But we're not doing that yet. But because of that structure hacking, we can do that too. And we can do it completely automatically in Emacs Lisp. So I kind of hope that there is a whole ton of stuff that we can do with Emacs Lisp add-ons and stuff like that to this engine that people can just go away and hack on and run the engine themselves and find out you know, new ways of presenting the files, new ways of dealing with the data. If we need to clean data up, maybe the stuff that we can do it in transformations and you know, all that kind of stuff we can create. Indexes, all those things. So it is working. It's, uh, it's got potential. Thanks to the man from New Zealand. Will it be fast enough? Right, it's just one Emacs process. 
that fast enough? Probably not. You can only establish a thousand connections into an Emacs process right now. That's down to a hard limit with a C code, and that's a problem for Lnode as well. But there are ways around that. Let me show you some more code. Oh. So this is an Nginx redirector. This allows us to have a single L node instance, which then redirects to lots of other L node instances and records the path at which it happens. And it, ha it can happen inside a front end load balancer like Nginx. Nginx is just a web server, but people often use it as a front end load balancer. So we can have a single L node instance, which knows about lots of other L node instances and farms out requests to them, which then become persistent paths back in and out of Nginx. So yes, the answer is yes, we can make performance work. So syntax highlighting I've showed you, Emacs Lisp in the page I've showed you. Federation. This is another really big reason to do this. Why? So. What, has anybody come across smallest federated wiki? Two, I think. So Ward Cunningham is a guy, long history with Lisp as well, this guy. He built the first wiki, and then he kind of left the whole subject alone for a long while. So he ran a wiki site called C2, which many of you will know. Um, but he didn't write another wiki engine for a long while. Everybody else has written wiki engines. My dog's written wiki engines, for God's sake. Um, uh, it's a bit like that one where, you know, hey, Dilbert's rat walks across this uh, keyboard and creates a web browser. Um, but what's, all of them have had the same failing, that it's difficult to move changes around and it's, um, you, you sometimes want to branch the wiki and then merge the branch back in. And that stuff is hard. So Ward came up with this idea, he revisited the idea recently of wikis, and he's been working on a completely federatable wiki, where the changes that you make are just made to your copy, and other people can pull from your copy, just to, like you can with a Git repo, and they can assimilate what changes they want. They can, they can choose to merge bits that they want and leave out other bits that they don't want, and that makes it entirely yours all of a sudden. Now, we can do that already, really, because our wiki is a GitHub, or a Git repo. Um, so we can already move it around like that. We just need the engine on the front to be controlling access to the actual content of the page. So people can't just put in what they like. They have to put in Creole to make it work properly so, so that we can all cooperate. Um, but once we've got that, we can just federate it. We can just move it around, massive lump, or in trickles, in a commit at a time, if we like. Um, now, why would we want to do that? Well, one of the big problems, I think, with Emacs uh, that we're reaching the limit of is the documentation. Um, so from a point of view of making all this stuff, so it's already been alluded to that Emacs has got so much stuff going on in it. You don't know what's going on. It's, in, it's impossible to keep track. And the documentation certainly doesn't keep track. But what if we move the documentation, all the list manuals and all the Emacs manuals, what if we moved them into the wiki and then federated them? Well, anybody could work on the manuals all of a sudden and make them better, and we'd have a chain of ownership. We'd know who was doing it, and we'd be able to move it around, and we'd be able to copy it amongst people, and we'd be able to get it better and better and better, just as we do with the code, just as we've done with the packages. So... The federation and the improving documentation and all that sort of stuff is future stuff that we could do. I want to show you one last thing I'm going to do. This is the Emacs wiki talking through an HTTP client to Emacs. So this is my page. We're missing the header at the moment, but this is my page being rendered 
mostly it's just Creole. This is just being rendered directly as Creole. It's not a web browser. So that's another thing that has blocked us, right? Is that people have said, oh, I want to be able to edit the wiki in, in my Emacs. And that means having a web browser. No, it doesn't. Why does that mean having a web browser? It doesn't mean having a web browser. It just means that you can talk HTTP over to, to the server. Um, preferably to a server running on your machine and then you can push the changes out to somebody else with federation. So we've got this, it's working. Okay, it's a bit mad. But this is a new way of dealing with information. We've got federation, we've got multiple formats, we've got the ability to control the text into the format. We've got the ability to understand the text and extend the wiki engine and pass those changes around just as we have with any other Emacs program. So Emacs Wiki is just an example of where we could be going with this. We could suddenly, within two or three years, we could have a complete, extensible, federatable, hackable information system inside Emacs that works inside a web browser as well. That's pretty cool. That's my talk. Thanks very much. If, if there's any questions, do feel free to ask them. I know people did ask along the way. And if, it was, if you do ask the questions, uh, please speak into the microphone. It's all right. I'll just pull the question out. Can um, Lnode handle SSL? And if not, is, um, how difficult would it be to implement that? So long way off. the question is, can Lnode handle SSL? Um, so Emacs doing cryptography is uh, a step too far even for me. I don't think it's necessary for Lnode to do SSL directly, right? But uh, Nginx and a whole bunch of other tools will enable you to endpoint the SSL and then just pass it straight on with HTTPS, or sorry, with um, HTTP 1.1. So it's fast because the SSL endpoint can maintain a connection um, and something else is doing the crypto for you, which is really what you want. You don't want Emacs Lisp doing that crypto for you. Calc is good, but it isn't that good. <laughs> Emacs does do crypto. Um, that's right. Somebody's just pointing out in the audience here that Emacs does do crypto. Um, you can talk to a, an SSL socket for IRC or um, actually this web client that I'm using to, to do this stuff will talk to HTTPS servers. It is a bit flaky though and I, I wouldn't want a server to have to do that. Why would you endpoint SSL? in Emacs. I can understand why you have to establish SSL because otherwise you can't talk to SSL services from Emacs. But endpointing it doesn't make any sense to me. Any other questions? There's one right at the back. Just shout and I'll repeat the question. Okay, don't. What do you think would be the, the cultural implication of having all the Emacs documentation on, on the wiki itself? Like usually, wikis are where documentation goes to die, and there's not the same ownership that you have in, say, documentation right. in Git repo. Right, so the question is, what do I think about Emacs documentation being in a wiki? Because uh, normally wikis are where text goes to die. Um, and that's absolutely right. I think that's the fear. Uh, but we used to say that about code. Uh, but now we have package repositories and stuff like that. Basically, the thing is to get somebody to maintain it. Now, how do you maintain it? You make the tools easier to get better maintainers um, and to make, you know, make it easier to maintain. Make it as easy as possible to maintain, and you've got something that has a chance of getting better. Now, I don't think anyone is going to leap at maintaining the Emacs documentation in the wiki anytime soon, certainly not this year. But if we can make really, really good tools, I don't see why it wouldn't be a better place in the long run. Now, okay, lots of people will take the, um, take the text and they'll fork it and they'll go make changes 
But that's what federation is for. If those changes are good and they can survive, then you can pull them back in somewhere official. So you should, you're always going to have an official um, Emacs wiki or Emacs documentation place so that people on the web can find it. But whether you have um, you know, millions of copies of it, all in different states, who cares? I don't. So there's a question here. Federation. So the question about Federation is um, when you talk about it is a Git repo, what if it was, say, it itself was 10,000 Git repos and each of the uh, pages was itself a repo, which was itself forkable? Um, I know there's a separate tool for that called repo. Have you considered this kind of um, massively so, multiple federated stuff? So, yeah, we're, we're just at the beginning of thinking about this sort of stuff. So that has occurred to us. The fact that um, there's a couple of things that you, you're raising there. So we, we're just, I, I hope that people on the um, stream could hear the question, but I'm going to paraphrase it. What if, you know, things go wilder than you're talking about? And it's not just one Git repo, it's loads and loads and loads of Git repos. So the first thing is that the wiki engine should only talk to a single repo, in my view. But there's a secondary thing there, which is you want something like gists. We want something like uh, GitHub has got with gists in that people can just go and make gists and they've, they've got independent change history and you don't want that mixed up with other change history. So we're already aware that there will have to be some concept of a separate isolated uh, pages or repo uh, which can be federated or not and how do you link those together and what's the web of federation and that sort of stuff is clearly on the edge of, we don't know. Um, sorry, there was a question near the back as well. No? Any more questions? What about documentation that is strongly coupled to code, so that if, if you have them in different locations, then... Um, you know, they can diverge and you can end up reading documentation for the wrong version of the, the code that you're using. Right. So I'll let you into a secret. Because another thing that I'm thinking about here is one of the things that will come up later is in the packages discussion, right? We've, we've solved this packaging problem in Emacs. We've got Elper and we've got um, Elgear and we've got Melper. Um, but one of the interesting things that Melpa does is that it talks to the Emacs wiki and a lot of people have uh, sniffed at that right? and said, and I think Elgate does too, right? A lot of people have sniffed at that and said, oh, I don't want to talk to the Emacs wiki. I, don't, I want to know where my code comes from. But, um, and there are strong reasons why that nobody wants to introduce um, definite authorship into the Emacs wiki. But what if we did? If we authored, if we put definite authorship into the Emacs wiki, I don't know if you know, right? There's a there's a, a, a bit of a thing about the Emacs wikis that you, anyone can just go and author the Emacs wiki. Anyone. Um, you could be anybody. You don't have to register. You don't have to sign in. You have to pass a capture to prove you're not a robot. Um, but actually, it's not a very difficult capture, and I know plenty of robots who could do it. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's fine. And that's a point of principle with... Uh, Ken Sonata and with a whole bunch of other people is that they don't want uh, a wiki that um, tracks ownership and that's fine but we could maintain that principle and the principle of ownership right you could have pages that are that you do know what the change history is on uh, or federated copies where you do know what the change history is on and that nobody is allowed to alter without having um, authorship uh, committed and once you had that if you combined that with a package repository, then you can solve the problem that you're talking about, which is how do I know that code and data or code and, and documentation are linked? Well, because you could make them the same thing. So all of a sudden you can start talking about package repositories that are wikis and wikis that are package repositories, and really there is no distinction anymore between code and documentation. And that's pretty exciting too. Don't tell anyone I told you that though, because they'd be frightened. 
Any more questions? Yeah. What's actually preventing us from just using this eLisp eWiki wiki right now? Um, so the question is, this is where we could go. What's actually preventing us doing this right now? Uh, what's actually preventing us doing this right now is the fact that I haven't put it up on a server yet because I only fixed this last night. Uh, <laughs> so until, until last night, there were a few bugs. Um, so I think it was about one o'clock in the morning I finally got this working. Um, but what's really stopping us, I, I think it doesn't do everything yet is the answer. So Ken Sonata is the owner of the wiki and he shall be in charge. Um, we need enough Emacs hackers to be working on this code to be confident that we can replace Ken Sonata's Perl madness with a community of Emacs madness, discounting me, uh, but perhaps not discount, discounting Adel goal. Um, so we could do with contributors. I, God, everybody's going to stand up here and beg for contributors, aren't they, basically? Um, but it's true, we could do with contributors who, who are prepared to hack on the wiki engine itself and on Creole, um, the mode. Um, so, other than that, I, I wrote a blog post at the beginning of the year saying this year in Emacs what I, was, what I promised the Emacs community that I would do. One of the things that I promised the Emacs community that I would do, um, other than making lame jokes, uh, is uh, to get this running on a server somewhere fairly early on. Now we're at the end of March and I still haven't managed that, but that's because I've had a whole bunch of stuff going on. But probably within a couple of weeks I can have this running on a server and people could actually be talking to it. It's not going to be authoritative for ages though until we can actually get people hacking on it, working on it, making it happen. Does that answer your question? Cool. Any more questions? Okay. Thanks very much. It's really great to see so many people here.